right, all right. It's not my weekend podcast. With your boy Jerry G. That's right. I'm back, homie. It is Tuesday, May 16th, Tuesday morning. It is approximately 10 a.m. in L.A. Hope you guys are having a good one. I uh, hope you all survive Mother's Day Palooza, right? A whole, seemed like a whole week long of Mother's Day celebrations. Desde el 10 de mayo hasta el 10 de 14 de mayo, whatever it is. Uh, it's a whole week long, right? Dads, we're lucky we get a couple hours. We're lucky we get a text back, right? Because I like to remind my kids when I don't have them, hey, it's, my, it's Father's Day. They're like, oh, yeah. That's all they put. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, dog. It's bad, though. Um, Mother's Day, I hope y'all got what you wanted. I hope all your wishes came true. Ay, ay, ay. And uh, it's hard, right? It is very difficult to get Mother's Day gifts, fool. It's not just the flowers and the candies anymore. It's not. Uh, you got to be more than that, fool, right? Uh, and I have a mother. I don't know if you guys know this. In fact, she is the best mom ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She is. And uh, I don't know if you guys know. She won a contest. She was named best mother of all time of the world, of the universe. And it happens to be my mom. Just coincidence. I'm sorry. You know? Uh, and uh, she happens to be the best mom ever. So, yeah, I just got lucky like that. I don't know what I did to deserve this greatness, but she is, all right? She is the best mom of all time. I love my, mom, love my mama to death. I do consider myself a uh, mama's kid, mama's child. Um, I love her, man. And she's older now, right? She, my mom's in her mid-70s, and obviously it's scary, right? Scary, scary situation. Not in her best health. Uh, she is a uh, diabetic, la chingada. Um, but she got diabetes, not the old fashioned way by fucking eating a hella fucking tortillas and fucking masa and sal y pinche azúcar. And uh, she does that anyway. That didn't help. But I don't know if you guys know this, but my mom, um, about, I was going to be almost about 20 years now, fool. It was like early 2000s, maybe 02, 03, 04. A lot of that time is a, a real blur for me, dog. But uh, my mom, um, she used to clean houses, bro. So limpiaba casas, like many of our moms do. And uh, that was her thing, fool, right? So she used to go to like Irvine and Orange County and Beverly Hills and all these fucking big ass mansions where I got a chance to go with her a couple of times. And I was I went like twice and I was like, never again. Obviously, it's embarrassing for a kid at that age. You know, I went with her as a teenager, like when I was, 17, 18, 19, 20. And she wouldn't do it all the time, but she was really good at it. Like, she, this is what, she didn't take a lot of jobs because she was actually really good. Like, she was, like, detailed. She liked to detail stuff, man, and take her time. And she was there for hours and, like, all day for, like, six, seven, eight hours for, like, $100, dude. For $100, she would spend all day at a house Cleaning, washing every inch of that home, bro. On her knees, on her everything. Windows, ceilings, curtains, toilets, fucking garages, everything, bro. And I went a couple of times for... And, and to be honest with you, I went and I was just... Yo, my, it's not about embarrassing, fool. Obviously, it's embarrassing to see your mom do that shit. Internally, right? It fucks with you a little bit inside. But second of all, I was more mad. I was mad. You know, angry. I, I was angry at what my mom was doing for a hundred dollars for very little money. And me being a fucking loser at the time, a 17, 18, 19, 20 year old loser with a part time job, if that, still living at my mom's house. You know, there wasn't much I can. T I couldn't tell her like quit this fucking job right here, right now. Uh, I I wanted to say that. I wanted to be like, yeah, 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 no. And I would say that, but she was like, ¿Y qué me va a dar? ¿Y qué me va a dar ese dinero? ¿Qué me va a dar cien dólares? ¿Tú vas a arreglar cien dólares? ¿Tú? With my fucking thirty-two dollars in my checking account, right? And I, I mean, I don't know, dog. It, it was. It was 
I, it was very, uh, it was a, a lot at the time. And I went like two, three times. And every time I went, I would like fight with her because I was so angry, upset, embarrassed at what she was doing for $100, dog. And then she would buy all these cleaning supplies, dog, that I don't think she got reimbursed for. I'm hoping some of these people were nice enough to reimburse her. But I don't see my mom asking for that money back, fool. I just don't. She's not that type of person, fool. Maybe she did. Maybe. I, I don't know. But I can't confirm that. But I remember we would go to the 99 cent store on the way to Irvine, California, or, uh, Huntington Beach, California, Pacific Palisades, California. We would pull over at a 99 cent store and she would get all these cleaning supplies. Right? She would spend like 30, 40 bucks on cleaning supplies, die. I'm hoping she got that money back, fool. I was, I was, so I would throw this all in her face. And of course, my mom, she's not going to talk. She's not going to fucking deal with this with me, dog. She sees me as a fucking kid, right? Uh, she's not going to have this conversation with me, dog. She's just like, hey, I'm doing this because obviously she, we need the money, fool. Right? And yo, pendejo, I was like, dude, you know? I would go, I would be the muscle, right? I would like... Lift couches for her, lift beds for her, throw trash away. And then I realized, wait, I don't come all the time. Who the fuck does this when I'm not here? She does this. She lifts all, she does all this heavy lifting when I'm not here. She will bring another lady, like another helper to another lady, basically. And I don't know if they will split the money up or she would pay the lady. I don't know. But I, I, I man. I was mad, dog. And I'll be like, ya no vaya, ma. ya no vaya. Like, pa que va, dude? Like, fuck, man. These people don't even appreciate. I mean, she would be on her knees just like scrubbing corners of the home, dog. Like, cleaning up the litter of the fucking cats, of the animals, of fucking... Dude, she, she would do everything, bro. Like, she would be outside, like, scrubbing on the, the floor of the patio, dog. Like... She would do, she would be hanging, doing windows, dog. Like, it was crazy. And I'd be like, ma, bájese de allí. Bájese. And mama like, por eso no me gusta que vengas. Porque no mames, me pones a regañar. No mames, me estás regañando todo el tiempo. Ya no, ya no, ya no quiero que vengas. She would be like that. And I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go, obviously. You know, it's fucking, we have to leave at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. Of course I didn't want to be there, dog. Want to be just like Jerry G and it's not my weekend podcast? Well, now you can, dog. Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily. Then you can distribute it everywhere and even earn money, compa. All in one place and for free. That's right. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. Here's how it works, dog. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Get it done, compa. See you on the top, fool. And she needed the help. That's why she would take me. And because of the fucking lazy ass douchebag, you know, she would bring me. But then the whole time I'm complaining, tengo hambre. I'm tired. Ya vámonos. Ya limpió eso. Ya, reco ya recogió allí. Ya hizo eso. Porque why are you scrubbing that again? You, why are you back in this bathroom? You already did this bathroom. Le falta, le falta todavía, le falta. I'm like, what the fuck, fool? That's my mom, fool. That was my mom, dog. And she did that. Fuck, fool. I want to say like, I guess, 90s. Because she didn't work during the week. My my dad did so in the weekend she would do this only Saturday or Sunday, um, and she she wouldn't take a lot of jobs because I think she she like like I said she'd spend so much time on this one job that she wouldn't take multiple homes. So I don't know, Don. A lot of that, trust me, I I, I try to forget. Like I I want to forget those times. I'm not proud of it as for me. Like how I reacted, how I behaved. I was mad. I'm gonna pasar regañándola the whole time and stressing her out, you know. And but me, it was all it was really my issues, dog. It was my issues of being a fucking loser that I should already like. She shouldn't be doing this, dog. I should have a better job, career, college, university, fucking degrees. I should be doing something better with my life. Where my mom 
shouldn't be doing this. And my dad also working at his job on the weekend, every weekend. Like, I felt like a fucking loser, dog. Like, but I didn't know what to do about it. I'm, a, I'm fucking hood. I'm just a hood ass kid from the hood. What, like, I was probably hung over sometimes going with her in the morning. Because I'd be out Friday night, Saturday night. I, I remember, fool, I'm, I was broke as shit, always. I was always broke as shit. But I always had money. Like, I always had money funneling in somehow. Like, I always had, like, hustles. You know, hustles. Dude, I sold counterfeit $100 bills. I sold fake Jordans. I, I stole shit. I broke into homes. I, I did all that shit in my teenage years, fool. Uh, I, so I always had money, but the money just went. Like it just, I just spent it always. Anytime I had a hundred bucks, fool, I needed to spend that shit on something, fool, on food, on clothes, on things, on bitches, on beer, on partying, on gas, on my, well, anything, fool. I always had to be spending money. And I remember I was always broke, like into like my mid twenties at least, fool, fast way, twenty five, twenty six. I had like. 80 bucks in my bank account, fool. If I had 200 bucks, it was like, whoa, that fucking, that's a lot of money, dog. Yeah, I was a broke ass, fool. Like, always bad, bad, just bad with money. Bad. And so, this is where my anger came from, where I got to see what my mama, how hard she worked for her money, for those $100, dog. And I was like, dude. So I was getting that, that the, the only reason she stopped, because she was doing this for like, Five, six, seven years from like, let's say like 95, 96, you know, when I was in high school, all the way through like, because before that she was working like at Fabrica's way, fucking at those sweatshops. And then she stopped the sweatshops, stay home more with the kids. So she was home with the kids more. And my my little brother and little sister were little elementary school and shit. So she just kind of stayed home more. And then my dad had like two jobs. And my dad worked seven days a week. And so she left that. My dad, I think my dad told her, like, stop fucking working. Just stay home. But eventually she wanted, we needed more money, I guess. And so, like, around late 90s through, like, the early 2000s, she was, and she was, it wasn't every weekend. Because I remember when the weekend she wouldn't go, I was, like, so happy. And that, I went on, like, she didn't get, she didn't go to that bullshit ass fucking job. But I remember she would, like, she would get phone calls. Ah, si, a donde es la casa? Y cuando, y si. And I'm like, oh, no, she got another fucking house. God damn it. And, uh, claro, claro, no le fallo, yo voy. Like, I guess people would, like, refer her. People would refer her and they would hit her up. And so she did that for, I'm, I'm trying to get at, what I'm trying to get at is that she did that for, like, five, six, seven years, right? And so now she's doing this shit. And then one day uh, she gets kidney stones at work. Right, she gets kidney stones. She has kidney stones. I'm getting, apparently she had kidney stones, and she's she's at one of her jobs and she collapses from the pain, and she can't get up from the pain. Scared the shit of the owners of the house. la madre, where she's like, she's out, bro. Like she's like, fucking passing out. And so they take her to the emergency. And this, she's already in Orange County. She's like in a nice part of town, for like a real. So that was kind of a blessing right there, somewhat. Right, because she's in, she, they take her to this fancy ass hospital, Irvine Medical Center, que la chingada, like where Kobe Bryant and them go for. And so she goes there, and they find out that yes, it's kidney stones, but these kidney stones have been complicating her shit and her her intestines, her internal organs, whatever the fuck, where the one of them is like clogging up. One of the raw, actual stones is clogging up. A fucking vein or what is that? Vessel, whatever the shit is. Artery that can't allow blood to get to her pancreas, dog. Right? So now her pancreas is drying out, fool. Right? And I don't even know this fun fact. You can't live without a pancreas, fool. Which I learned that that day. And so obviously it's, it, it, it became a thing, fool. Like it's a thing now, fool. Like it's huge emergency surgery. She may not make it. I'm like, what do you mean? She, she, fool, my mom's like in her early 50s at this point. Fool. I'm like, what do you mean she's not going to make it? Fool? What the fuck? Everybody rushes to Irvine. Everybody gets a phone call. Fool, I get to the to urgent care, to the urgent care, wherever she's at. 
I can hear my mom screaming full through the doors. Like, every time, you know, those doors, like, you know, come open. You can hear my mom screaming from the fucking pain. And she's just, like, yelling like like a lady giving birth to fucking eight kids, fool. Or whatever the fuck, the octomom. Anyways, I can hear you yelling, fool. And I'm breaking down, bro. I'm like, oh, my God, my mom. That's my, I, you know your mom's fucking voice and scream and cry. You know it. We all know it. And I'm fucking, oh, shit. Every time that fucking door swings open, I can hear you yelling, bro. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm fucking checking. Like, my sisters, they're all there. ¿Qué pasó? What's going on? Uh, we've been giving her pain medicine. She's still, it's still not working. It's like, it's not working for some reason. She's like, she's going, she's just in a lot of pain right now, guys. It's the kidney stones. We're trying to get to it. Like, some, some of the nurses were, nurses were like, Está exagerada, she's exaggerating, dog. It's not that relaxed. She should be fine. They're giving her pain medicine. And other people were more like caring, like, yeah, man, she's going through a lot right now. Just, you know, please hang hang tight. We'll get you, we'll let you know. And yeah, fucking doctor came out, man. And he's like, hey, dude, prepare for the worst. Like, get the whole family here. We got the whole family was there. Prepare for the worst, man. Your mom might not make this shit. She's like, they once they figured out what it was, they're like, "Yo, yeah, your fucking her pancreas is done, her pancreas is done. She might not make it through. She can't make. You can't live with a pancreas, fool. Oh my goodness, fool. We're like, oh fucking that my earth, my earth, my life, my world just shattered there, fool. Broke down, crying, toda la madre, we. Uh, but she's a trooper, dog. Like every other piece of fucking parent, she's a trooper, dog. And she, they went to surgery. They cut out." A portion of her pancreas. They cut out like 20% of her pancreas. Uh, the bad part of the pancreas. They took it out. And they said, look. Um, she lost a lot of her pancreas. She is now diabetic because of the this. She's now type 2 diabetic. She's going to have to ve- live a very careful, tight diet. Fucking diet. And her her life span is severely shortened by this dog like we give her like five to ten years dog or like come on no my man way five to ten years if she's like that way if she takes care of herself fool. if she eats well if she exercises if she's not in stress none of those things my mom was gonna happen with my mom none of those things my mom was not gonna eat well my mom was not gonna exercise and my mom is not gonna not stressful and so i were like oh my goodness yeah, if she stays away from those things, she can live up to 10 years, fool. But the pancreas eventually, it's big, bro. Like, you need that fucking pancreas to break down your food, dog. Huh? So this is like early 2000s, bro. 20 years. Been about, I want to say 2003, I want to say. About 2002, 2003. I was young, fool. I was like literally 21, 22. Um, so I remember this shit, dog. And uh, she's still with us, gracias a Dios, obviously. Um... But it hasn't been easy, man. She goes through a lot of like diabetic shocks. Uh, she's she has hard she has a hard time controlling her fucking sugars. She eats bullshit still, right? Um, and but somehow she's with us, dog, because she's like they have her like a lot of like medicines. She goes to the doctor a lot. She doesn't miss her doctor shit. My mom wants to live. Obviously, she doesn't want to die. She's one of those ladies that actually cares about living. And does her best, but she's also old and careless, fool, and no fucks given, right? She's like mid seventies now, fool. So, yeah, man. So all my, you know, my mother's days have always been very special to me. Um, I, I, she, she has four kids. I got two sisters and a brother, and I can honestly say I'm her favorite. <laughs> I'm the one that's most involved. I have the most personality. I do a lot of things for her. I, I, I'm the one that calls her the most. And, you know, my sisters, obviously, they, they fucking do a great job taking care of her, both of them. She lives with one of my sisters. But as a lot of you guys know, man, and I've realized and I've learned, daughter and mom, mom's relationship are, are, fuck, could be very, right? Oh, sassy, right? You, you ladies be fighting a lot. And they get, they fight a lot. They argue a lot. You know, it's love, it's family, but they argue a lot, fool. 
It's the mother daughter shit, dog. You know, um, nothing like a mother son and a daughter's and a daughter uh, father. Cause I could generally say my dad is closer to my to my daughter to my daughter to his daughter to my sisters than me. I love my dad to death, but my dad and I are just like, like what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? When it comes to my sister, his daughters, oh, he fucking loves him. He'll fucking do anything for him, dog. But for me, it's just like, ah, he's doing good. He's doing good. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, uh, so I'm usually pretty good at giving my mom gifts and shit. I really am. Uh, but, you know, as she gets older, it's harder, dog. You know? Fuck. I don't know what the fuck to get them. I've, I've done the jewelry. I've done the earrings. I've done the watches, the bracelets, you know, all the gold shit. As they're older, they don't wear that shit no more. They don't wear that shit in their 70s. So they don't wear no fucking pearl necklaces. You know, they don't need to go out much. My mom hardly goes out. She really doesn't go anywhere. You know? Uh, I've bought her the fucking fancy dope fucking shoes and this and that. Which I bought her shoes this time again. I bought her two pairs from Skechers. And, you know, Skechers, by the way, is a fucking place to go if you're fucking old, dog. I can't wait to go there in a few years. Skechers, I got some comfortable ass orthopedic ass shoes. Yes, I will be rocking Skechers in 2035, fool. For sure. For sure. So I bought some, and they're expensive, motherfuckers. So I bought some shoes from there. But the point is that it's always hard to figure out what the hell to get her, dog. So I just ask her now, fool, like, ¿Qué quiere, ma? ¿Qué quiere? No, pues unos zapatos, porque they're going to go to Mexico in June to see the house almost being done. So the house should be done by June. I already got them their tickets. I bought them the fucking tickets. I, like, you know, I, anyways. I don't tell her this, fool, but I'm like, I get it, fool. I got to buy a present, a Christmas present, a birthday present, a Mother's Day present. I get it. Pero se me sale, no me sale mucho del corazón when I'm over here like, fool, I'm building you guys a whole fucking house in Mexico, dog, that I'm over fucking budget on now. You know, like, dude, I, every time you guys go to Mexico and from Mexico, I buy you guys a fucking tickets, dog. Like, I don't ever charge you guys. But I don't never throw it in their face. I'm just in my head like, fuck, man, I got to do this too. And I got to get you a gift too, man. God damn. I'm that guy. To myself. To myself. I don't tell nobody. Um, so, yeah, but that's why maybe like, the, the, that's why the gift shit stresses me out. Because I'm like, fuck, I'm already doing all this other shit already. Anyways, it's your parents. But, yeah, man, that's the thing. My, my mom knows nothing about Facebook and Instagrams and all that shit. I feel a little weird shining her out on all that stuff when she has no idea what the fuck's going on on the social media stuff, for, you know? Um, my dad, too. Like, my dad... My dad's never even... I they have phones. They have those... They have those little paisa phones that they get for free for being old. There's, they, they, you know, they qualify because they so, they're on social security now. So they qualify for these free phones. So they got these flip phones, fool. That's how they got... They can't even text on them, fool. They don't know how to text. They never text in their life. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and they're always answering each other's phones. I guess I'm like just laying around because I call my mom, my dad answers. I call my dad, my mom answers. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? You guys playing receptionist over there? What's going on? No, es que mi teléfono no lo encuentro. It's always, no lo encuentro, no sé dónde le puse, no sé dónde está el teléfono. No, me llamaste, no sé dónde está el teléfono. Always. Ay, mi teléfono, no sé dónde está el teléfono. Ya lo perdí. Fool, they get a, they get a phone every day. They, to, they change their number. Like two, three times a year, fool. Because they always lose a phone. Or apparently, uh, there's some paperwork that needs to be signed every so often so they can continue that service for free, which they don't ever sign. They don't ever fill out. So that shit will just disconnect. And then they have to go to one of those canopies. You're seeing them on the sidewalks and the streets giving out free phones. And that's where they go. So they go there. They can show them their ID and they get a whole new phone. So every six, like six months, I want to say tops, they change their number. They're here like fucking living like Pinche Pablo Escobar, like Pinche Chapo and shit. They got all these burner ass phones that they have to replace every few months, time. And so I'm, I never know who I'm calling. Then I'm calling them, and it's a completely different person answers. Like, again, Javier, Javier, your dad. I'm not your dad, motherfucker. Get the fuck. Wrong number, bitch. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Then I got to figure out, all right, where the fuck, where the number, who, where they at? You know? So, yeah, fool, they're, 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 they're impressive, fool. Impressive. 
All right, let me see what else, fool. Okay, big day, big day. Big weekend, big weekend, big day today, Tuesday. The Lakers start the Western Conference Finals, compa. Finals, the championship of the universe in the Western Conference starts today, right? Um, amazing, amazing how far we've gone. I'm so proud of these guys. But the job is not done. If they lose in the Western Conference Finals, which they are projected to lose, I will be disappointed. Yes, because you've brought us this far, LeBron James. LeBron James. We've come this far, Anthony Davis. We've come this far. And I don't want us to stop here, fool. We need to finish the job. And I know it's not easy. Denver is a tough team. But I did say I would rather play Denver than Phoenix, right? And so I got my wish.com. So I need, I, I got what I wanted, fool. And I, but I, 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 I guess I failed to realize how good, how good Denver is. I mean, shit. But with all that said, I'm sticking with Lakers and Six. I've said Lakers in six in the first two series, and they've won it in six in the first two series, huh? Nostradamus right here, dog. Nostradamus. Um, shout out to the homie Valentino Erron, who keeps inviting me to attend the Laker game with him. He has he's a season ticket holder. And uh he's he's invited me twice to go check out the Lakers during the playoffs, and I have been unable to attend. Thanks for the invite, though, brah. I'm hoping to make it um, maybe this weekend. We'll see. Um, yeah, dog, every time he hits me up, man. First of all, the guilt, man. The guilt. I'm that guy. I, I feel guilty now going to a game without my kids, dog. Like, I still do it. Like, I felt guilty when I was in Chicago watching the Cubs Dodgers. And I'm sending pictures to my kids. And I feel guilty, dog. Like, I, I'm like, dude. I, I don't like flexing like that, fool. It doesn't feel good. I like to enjoy with them. Which is a trip more than with friends, to be honest with you. Um, I, I went to a game with my with Fernie and a homie, Jaime. And we went to the Clippers-Lakers game. And uh, I had fun, of course. But I missed my kids. Like, I sound like a chump, fool. I sound like a chump, dog. Uh... But yeah, it's it's facts, dog. It's facts. Anyways, I'm down though. I'm down to go to a game without my kids. Hell yeah. But it's, the thing is, it's, it's because they invite me when I have the fucking kids. So like now I feel bad about, I got to drop these fools off to their mom's house because I need to go to a basketball game. Like I don't mind doing it for a show. It's work. I'm getting paid, right? But I don't mind doing it for that. But for to go have like, Leisure time. Ah, yay, yay, yay. Leisure time. Yeah, it doesn't hit the same time. It doesn't hit the same. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Valentina. Let me see what other shout outs I got, fool. We're going to wrap this up, fool. Actually, I got to wrap this up, fool. It's going to be a short one because it's already Tuesday. I started late. It's already going to be 11 right now. And I got a meeting at 12, fool. So I got to get ready for that. Uh, let me see here. I, I got a couple of shout outs here. Besides all the moms, fool. Like, I, I was talking shit a little bit earlier about mom, Mother's Day. I caught myself. But uh, I'm obviously I'm having fun, dude, with that. And um, you ladies deserve the world, man. Mom, like, I gave I gave my baby's mama and my baby's mama's mama, my ex-suegra and my current suegra, um, flowers, fool. Like, you have to, dog. You have to, fool. Okay, let me see here. Uh, real quick, uh, May 25th is approaching. May 25th, Oxnard Levity Live. Oxnard Levity Live. I'll be there Thursday, May 25. All right? Then May, then Wednesday, May 31st, Ontario Improv, dog. Ontario Improv, Wednesday, May 31st. Then the following day, Thursday, June 1st, I will be at San Antonio Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. Then later that Saturday, June 3rd, the Toxicos are coming to Chicago 
And uh, we will be at Avondale Music Hall. Yes, sir. So, please, a lot of big shows coming up. Chicago, San Antonio, Ontario, y Oxnard. Agarrense, cabrones. We on our way, Dyke. We are on our way. All right, let me see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, yeah, I had one yesterday, fool. I just read it yesterday. It just dropped. Let me, uh, dude, I thought I screenshotted it. Dude, did I not screenshotted it? Uh, I, I remember I screenshotted it. Why would it? Oh, here it is. Uh, Giovanni at The Advisor. Yesterday while I was at the game, uh, he was all like, Hey, podcast topic idea. I would like to know if you spank Ralph Barbosa on that court. I remember seeing a picture of you guys, but never heard any mention of it on the American Wannabes or your podcast. Please tell me you won. I hate to break it to you, Giovanni, but I will, I had an off day that day, man. I was horrible. Um, we played the Texan comics because he had his Texas openers with him. We came back to HP, Huntington Park, California, South Lake Park to be exact. Uh, we went there like in the morning. It was like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. They, they charged five bucks. To use the court It was empty And so We played I believe it was like Four on four Half court Like fucking chumps We couldn't even do half, Full court dog But we did Four on four Half court uh, LA Comics Versus Dallas cow, uh, Texan co uh, Comics And uh, We went to like 13 And we lost We lost I had a weak ass team I blame my team. I had Alfred Robles, Fluffy's opener, and uh, I forgot who else I had, fool. A couple other cats. And we got our asses whooped. Yep. We lost like 13 to 5, fool. Uh, it wasn't my fault. You know, I scored like three of those five points. So I did my part. Uh, but yeah, that was the outcome of that. Uh, let me see here. What else I got here? Let's do it. Uh, dumb, dumb. Let me see here. Uh, Oh yeah, this guy. The the mad the madam zero zero. The madam zero zero, but it's a guy picture. All right. Uh let me see. Uh let me see here. Uh what's going on here? Uh uh you didn't mention Houston. Oh, he talked about let me see, you could probably make it for, oh he gave me a he gave me a joke idea, which I I don't mind guys. I don't mind you guys giving me joke ideas. Many uh ninety nine percent of the time they're not good. But within those 99% of horrible ideas, there's also, there may be a good premise or something I can extract. Ay, 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 extract from that idea and uh, it could get, get the, t the wheels turning on something. But uh, I'm not going to embarrass the homie, the, the, the madam, zero, zero. He sent me, uh, I mean, it's not the bad, it's not the worst idea. Let me see. Actually, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Let me see here. When it's your weekend with the kids, I used to tell the women I was talking to, hey, you come over, come over after bedtime, you know, for some Netflix and chill. When the kids were small, going to bed at 9 p.m. Now that they're getting older, they're staying up later than me. Midnight, 1 a.m., little cock blockers. Dude, actually, that's not bad, bro. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, because it is facts, right? Um, I live in a two-story home. So when my kids were little, yes, I would invite girls to come over to the pad after 10 p.m. But we would kick it in the living room downstairs and, you know, you know, you know, you know. Which is a little weird, right? Having your kids upstairs, you're watching guy that way. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I didn't do that too often. I picked my spots here and there. Uh, and, of course, you had to know the deal with the fuck's going on. Uh, other than that, yeah, bro. Uh now that they're older, yeah, they stay up late. They know what's up. And uh, I, ain't, I ain't about that life no more anyway, dog. But that's a good premise, fool. Not the worst. Not the worst. I, I can do something with this. Uh, Ipo, you could probably make it funnier. Yes, I can. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try, for sure. I'm going to check it out. Uh, yeah, you know what? You know what, fool? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to play with this. I am going to play with this, fool. All right? Uh... All right. Uh, he also said, you didn't mention Houston on your podcast, though. I'd rather live in San Antonio anyways, too. When I was talking about Texas life and I'm down to live there, I did not bring up Houston. Houston is ugly, fool. I've been out there many times with Chingo Bling. 
I actually stayed there like a whole week one time when we were doing a Netflix special bits. Uh, the weather, the weather's ugly. It's very muggy, swampy. Uh, no. And and I look around. It, I, I mean, I do appreciate some of the, you know, traditional stuff, Latinos, you know, tamales and there's tacos, there's barracoa. There's some cool shit, right? But overall, it's, it's L.A. dirty, bro, because L.A. is dirty. L.A. is very dirty. And so when I see another city like L.A., dirty-wise, it doesn't turn me on because I go, I already have that at home, fool, right? Which is why I don't cheat on my fucking chick, duck, because I already have that dirtiness. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I was trying to. All right. All right I'm sorry. All right? Uh, nah, Houston doesn't do it for me, dog. And then you guys have floods? No way. No mames way. It's not even that great there, fool. Uh, yeah, San Antonio, fool. San Antonio's a shit for me, dog. I'll stick with that. All right, let me see what else I got here for before I wrap this up. Um, good shout out, though, man. That's a good shout out. It's a good one. See, fool, keep them coming, fool. All right, Adam Angel de Leon. Thanks for showing love for Texas on today's podcast, compa. In my opinion, the best place to live in the Lone Star State is is South Central Texas between San Antonio and Austin. You have rivers, lakes, and hill country views. San Marcos will be a good city for you, compa. College town right between both big cities. Looking forward to June 1st show in San Antonio. Adam, Angel, y Leon, all you motherfuckers, you bring up a good point, dog. You bring up a definite good point. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Austin. Uh... Same answer as what I said about Houston. Not down for all the dirtiness, the homelessness. I, I'm up to here with that shit here in LA, bro. So when I go somewhere else and I see that too, it turns me off. But I know you're not talking about me living in actual Austin. You're talking about living between Austin and San Antonio. And you're right. And there's other little states. New Brunsfield? Is it New Brunsfield? That's where Steve Trevino lives. And it's beautiful there, bro. Fucking beautiful. Now, it may be a little too far to get to airports. I need to live within like a 30-minute drive of an airport. Tops. I can't be driving an hour to an airport and then an hour home when I land. I can't do that, bro. I can't. Uh, I live about 30 minutes away from the LAX. It does turn into 45 minutes or more with traffic depending on what time I'm flying. So I'm not happy about that already. Because I, I only live like 15 miles from the airport, dog. Um, average 30 minutes to get there. But there's times where it's bad traffic and it takes me about an hour. And just that is enough for me to get upset. So imagine having to literally drive every time an hour to the airport to get away, to go to a gig. Nah, bro. Not down with that. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. But good point, homie. Good point. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. Liana Medrano. Listening to today's podcast, just want to say thank you for making my morning. You're so funny. Hit the fucking nail on the head about New Mexico. My baby daddy took off over there to escape child support and trouble he was getting into over here. Thank you again for keeping your podcast going. I feel abandoned by the American wannabes. Yeah, it's going to be a minute for American wannabes. We haven't met. We haven't even talked about meeting. It's going to be a while, guys. Hang in there. We are freezing the Patreon payment, so please. Um, But thank you, Liana. Yeah, it was on point. New Mexico is on point, like I said. I remember one of the first times I went to New Mexico. One of the first times, and I've been there many times. I went to Pueblo, New Mexico. Pueblo, right? And y'all know Pueblo. People from out there. It's a pretty big enough city and town, whatever you want to call it. I was out there, first time there, tripping out already that, you know, we're there. And I run into this guy, tatted up in the face, dog. Tatted up in the neck, fool. And he had the big name of the gang that's here in that in HP, right? Which I would not say, you know, because... It, it, it's F13. Florencia Tres is a big gang out here, right? I have no association with 
Shout out to them. Sure. Fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, he has a big F and a big one and a big three on his forehead, on his neck. He has a whole word, Florencia, which is a lot of fucking letters. And uh, so anyway, this fool comes up to me, dog. And I'm like, hey, who are you? He's like, hey, homie, you from L.A.? I'm like, yeah, man. Hey, man. I was, this is after the show. He's like, yeah, man. Uh, I'm from, I think he said Southgate or some shit. Or I forgot what he said. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from HP. Yeah, I heard you say Because I used to claim HP. When I first started doing comedy, I used to say HP a lot on my, on my set. You know, that was my whole little thing. Uh, so I, um, this guy came up to me. And yeah, and sure enough, Pueblo, you could say it's in the middle of nowhere almost, right? It's a little hidden town, but it's a town. It's a pretty big population. And uh, he was all like, you know me. I'm like, what are you doing out here, dog? He's like, oh, you know, got to get away, dog. You know, you got people looking for me. And that's like, that's what it, that's what New Mexico was to me. That's what New Mexico is to me. Like, you want to get lost? You go to New Mexico, fool. And you want to leave everything behind you? You you start all over, start fresh. You go to New Mexico, die, and yeah, full on point. Thanks, Liana. All right, let me see here. Let me see if I got any more shout outs before I wrap this shit up. Um, that's another good shout out. Uh, La Piñata. Hey, I went to go see this play called Real Men Have Chichis this weekend. A homie of mine. Uh, pinche. Uh, fuck man, why am I drawing a blank right now, fool? Uh. Ignacio, shout out to Ignacio uh, Gonzalez, who wrote, uh, who wrote fucking uh, Real Men Have Chichis, and I went over to support, uh, he's a good guy, man, good people, and so I went to check it out, it's a workshop, which means it's still in the beginning pro- uh, process of it, which is similar to what my shit, La Piñata is also going to be a workshop, all right, so don't expect greatness, uh, but yeah, um, it's pretty good, fool. So shout out to him. He just reminded me because I just saw the piñata flyer. So now the piñata is happening, of course. In fact, there's um, there's rehearsals tonight, which I'm trying to get out of because of the Laker game. Pero it's going on. All right. So there's already an event right out there. There's a link. I want you guys to check that out. If you really want to go, please jump on it. And please make sure you do come. Don't just reserve your spot and not come. Because like I said, it's very, very limited seats in that bitch. And so, um, yeah, we want to make sure that if you, you, you do that, you come for sure. All right. Um, it's called the Arts Share LA. That's where it's going to be at. At the Arts Share LA. It's a tiny little theater. Literally holds like 50 people, guys. 70, I think. So we're doing three shows. Two Saturday, one Sunday. I will, I'm planning to be at all of them. So probably with my family also. I told my family about it. They might come. And uh, La Piñata, written by yours truly. So proud of this. So excited for this. And uh, we'll see where this goes, man. I'm I'm very happy with it, man. Just whatever it is, I'm just proud of it, man. Um, La Piñata. All right. Uh, I think that's it, guys. I got a lot of shit to do, man. I got still got a shower. I got to try to get something to eat before I go to this meeting. And I got to bounce for it. So I'm going to leave it right here. Yeah, I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to give you guys a short one. Uh, but yeah, I went to the Dodger game yesterday. I did get my Mookie Betts bobblehead. Uh, so I got recognized on the way to the parking lot. I got recognized by some two guys, right? They were kind of drunk. And they're like, hey, the guy's like, hey, you're that famous guy, huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's me. Damn, I follow you sometimes, eh? I'm like, what do you mean sometimes? What does that mean? Oh, you know what I mean, dog? Like, you pop up in my shit sometimes, dog. You're fucking funny, dog. I'm like, thanks, fool. What's your name? I'm like, it's Jerry, dog. Jer- Jerry Garcia. Oh, yeah, that's right, dog. You're fucking funny, dog. And this was like, during, I left during like the six, seven day inning, fool. We left around 9 o'clock. That game went into uh, extra innings, by the way. It finished at 11. But anyways, I left around seventh inning or so, and then so he, they are le- they're leaving too, and so I was like, yeah, man, and he's all like, yeah, man, we fucking get a- we didn't get a bobblehead, dog, man, fucked up, eh? I'm like, yeah, dog, that's fucked up. I've been there, fool, with as we have our bobbleheads, I've been there, fool. He's like, yeah, man, 
oh, you should sell me one, dog. I'm like, nah, I'm good, fool. Like, these are already spoken for. Ay, ay, ay. These are spoken for. And uh, I'm sorry, dog. I can. I would, but I can't. And then it's whatever, dog. All right. It's all good, dog. It's all good. Whatever. And I regret it right away. Like, I should have been like, maybe because they were drunk and a little bit annoying. That's the only reason. Honestly, the only reason. Because I did regret it as soon as he, like, they walked their, the, the other way, went their separate ways. I regretted it. I'm like, fuck, I should have, man. But my son, Diego, my oldest, being a better person than me, was like, you should give him one. You should give, give, him, give him mine. Sell it to him. So sell it to him. Sell him mine. I'm like, you sure? Like, yeah, sell him mine. I'm like, all right, yeah, because I felt bad, too. I'm like, yeah, you're right, dude. All right, you sure? I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. I'm like, hey, dude, hey, dude, come back, fool, come back. I was those ways, come back. I'm like, oh, I'll sell you one, dog. I'll sell you one. He's like, for real? He got all excited, dog. He started, like, running back. For real? How much? The lejos. As he's running over, he's like, how much? I'm like, give me 20 bucks, dog. All right, dog, all right. And it's coming, you know, he's fucking running back. He's like, oh, man, thanks, man. Goes, yeah, just give me 20 bucks, fool. He's like, oh, I appreciate it. And then I go, it was actually my son's. My son is going to, wants to sell you his Baba here, fool. He told me to call you back. He's like, oh, dog, bro, thanks, man. I appreciate you, man. He's like, yeah, it's for him, dog, 20 bucks. Wait, fine, fine. Oh, man, here you go, dog. Oh, shit, man, for sure, dog, appreciate you. He's a barber, of course, if you couldn't tell already. He's a fucking barber. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he was cool. I found, we did the right thing. I mean, the thing is that there was two of them. So I was like, I got to give two of my bobbleheads. If I give it to one, the other one's going to want one too. And then they're kind of, they're a little sloppy drunk. You know, they're like, they're not even remember this. I was just like, yeah, but we did the right thing. We did the right thing. So. All right. All right, let's wait. Uh, that's it. That's it. 45 minutes. Wait, came out scared anyway. 45 minutes. Come on. Uh, appreciate you motherfuckers uh, Guys, please pay attention to all the shows I got coming up Oxnard, Ontario San Antonio And Chicago Four big shows coming up the next two weeks Then after that I'll be in El Paso, Texas El Paso, Texas Comic Strip June 8th through the 11th dog. So yeah, it's going to be a fun Next couple of weeks da Lakers in six Dodgers kicking ass Keep it going, six wins in a row and it's on, baby. All right? You guys have a great rest of the week. I'm your boy, Jerry G. Thank you for everything, man. Oh, real quick. I had written a note here. I don't forget. I want to apologize for last week's episode. I was, like, moqueando a lot. Yeah. Huh? And I apologize for that. I didn't, I didn't notice that I was doing that until I heard the episode. And I fucking, I was, like, so embarrassed about that. Um, I remember that I was going through allergies. My allergies were kicking my ass. Bad, I didn't. I, and I blew my nose before I started the show. Before I started recording, I blew my nose, so I was good. But in the middle of it, that shit came back. Those mocos, it's pura agua, también es pura agua. But a couple of times, it got like it, it sounded really bad, and I apologize for that. Cause I'm very, I'm a professional, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you guys know this. I'm a professional, and uh, yeah, it wasn't cool that I was sniffing like a fucking coke head the whole. PJ second half of the episode, dog. So I apologize for that shit. I know that was a turnoff for you ladies. And it's not cool, dog. All right. I'm out of here, guys. You guys have a great week. Thank you so much. You have a good one, right? <laughs>